Hello everyone, um, welcome to sort of episode one of me doing a voiceover of one of my recent videos. Um, so I'm going to try to do this in sort of one take, so um, it's going to be as genuine as possible. Uh, and I'll be trying to answer some of your questions that you left in the comment section of the original video of this. Uh, and also just explaining a bit about myself and so you can uh, get to know me a little bit more. Um, because it's important that uh, that this channel is a, is a personal thing to you and uh, I feel like we can grow together. But anyway, so um, yeah, in this video I'm using a piece of rippled sycamore. So sycamore isn't actually a native tree of the United Kingdom. Uh, that's obviously where I live. Um, I live in the southeast. Um, anyway, so sycamore isn't a, uh, a native tree to this country. Uh, it's actually from Scandinavia and it was introduced... Um, to parks and and places like that in the um in the, about the 15th century uh, and then since then it's sort of gone wild and it, and it grows absolutely everywhere uh, and because of that it's sort of it, it's our most dominant maple now um so it's, it's not quite as pretty as some of the uh, north american maples like hard maple and sugar maple and big leaf maple uh, but it's still uh, when you get a piece of wood like this with, with the um the rippling in it it's, it is absolutely incredible um i mean that's why I really tried to highlight in, in this video. Uh, and a few people asked why I kept the bowl so thick. Obviously, you'll, you'll see it, the finished piece eventually. I might be skipping ahead a bit now. But I wanted to keep it a little bit thicker, so it really highlighted that grain. Um, I mean, the whole thing with wood turning, I think that the tendency is people think that the thinner it is, the more skilled you are. But sometimes I do think if you make things too thin, you lose some of that kind of... You lose that weight and you lose that... That, um, that sole of the wood a little bit if it's, if it's too thin like a kind of plastic or something like that I like it to have some meat on it some weight um, but anyway so yeah so our native maple in the United Kingdom is the field maple it, the leaves are a lot smaller it's very delicate looking leaves really really beautiful leaves uh, and the woods are a lot more wild uh, and it's often found in like hedgerows and things like that around sort of farmland and that there's there's i mean there's some in um, in parks and that but anyway they're, they're they're smaller trees they don't seem to grow too big and whether that's because their natural sort of uh, habitat has been dominated by these sycamores but anyway so uh, a sycamore like this to get the rippling it needs to be quite a large tree and this is obviously the out, outside of the uh, the sort of outer of, of the uh, of the, the plank uh, and yeah, you get these uh, these amazing looking rippling lines. But anyway, um, so lots of people often ask um, why I use carbide chisels. So they're the chisels that you've just seen me use there. So they're the, uh, the square tipped, the round tip, and then the, the diamond tip. I do find them a little bit easier to use sometimes, especially when I'm cutting a, 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 a tenon or mortise. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they just they just seem to do it they'll do a little bit of a quicker job i know that all the traditional wood turners don't like them as much um compared to sort of traditional cut um wood turning tools but they, i think they just get the job done just as well uh, and just as quickly and i mean people do say that if you you know if you have a properly sharpened wood uh, traditional wood turning chisel you don't have to do as much sanding but i always find that even if my chisels are uh, extremely sharpened you can't get the finish like i can get when i when i do a couple of hours worth of sanding uh, and that's one of the things of my videos um I don't think people <laughs> truly know how long it takes to, to finish a bowl like this. So, obviously, you know, I, I can't I can't show um, an, un, an unsped up version of it because you'd be watching it for hours. Uh, and I often turn my pieces over multiple days because I work full time still. So I'm hoping that one day potentially I'll be able to take uh, YouTube on full time. Depends what I do with my career. Um, but anyway, so at the moment it's just a hobby, uh, and I love sharing that with uh, with everyone that watches the channel. Um, but yeah, it's it, I, I spend hours and hours sanding these pieces just so they're they're as perfect as they can be. Um, and I mean, I really enjoy the sand. I think I enjoy most seeing what the piece looks like um, throughout. So as soon as you put that sort of, you start on the lower grits, like 60 and that, which is a really harsh grit to get it all roughed out and smoothed properly to a, a rounded shape. Um, then you work through, you know, 240 grit. As soon as you've done a 240 grit, you start to see a bit more of the grain. It's more of a softer, uh, a softer um uh, material and then you work through to say 400 500 grit and then it's getting more and more fine you're starting to see the grain a bit more uh, and then i usually go up to about 10,000 grit so it takes a bit of time but it's well worth it and as soon as you're on that really high grit it's just got such a natural shine to it 
Uh, and then I put um, normally put Danish oil and then wood wax. That's my sort of go-to finish. Uh, except from Danish oil takes about eight hours to dry between coats, so it can take a bit of time. So uh, occasionally I'll, I'll speed that up by using sanding sealer, and often it works just as well. Um, sanding sealer and then wood wax. But anyway, so um, yes, yeah, so this this piece was just sort of a basic piece to show off grain um, more than anything. Um, so obviously you're used to on the channel seeing me turn turn some more elaborate projects or things like that. But yeah, for this one it was was all about showing you what natural beauty there is in, in wood. Um, and I don't think the video did as well as it could have potentially done because, I mean, I think people prefer seeing me turn some massive root or something like that than, than a pre-cut bowl blank. But anyway, sometimes I like to do a bit different stuff. I know that a bowl is a little bit boring, but... There's only so much wood turning things you can do. But yeah, as I said, I just wanted to show off the uh, the sort of the natural beauty of this piece. Anyway, this is this is one of my favourite chisels that I'm using now. Um, it's always in my in my um, links in the, the bottom of the video. It's a crown um, a chisel. It's it's just perfect. It, it cuts so well. Um, and it's yeah. And then I'm using this um, this rough uh, this scraper now just to to get that finish as fine as I can before I start the sanding. Again, these all these chisels uh, were supplied by Axminster. I've got a good partnership with them, uh, and I've always got links in the bottom of the video um, to their items if you want to purchase them. Uh, and then purchase them up. Purchasing them also helps uh, support the channel, which is uh, which is great. And I only ever recommend products that I'd be happy to use myself. So that's a, a real key thing for me. I, I don't like. I wouldn't ever tell you guys to go and buy something if I don't actually believe in it myself. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, this uh, this bar, as I say, I like. I, I wanted to keep it a bit more meaty, um, and just to show off the grain. Uh, and I do tend to sand using uh, a drill most of the time. It d really depends on the wood. Uh, a piece of wood like this sycamore, if you don't sand, or if I don't sand using this drill, you could potentially see a little bit of tear out uh, when the chisel was running uh, against the grain. So if you use this, it really helps to, to rough out that bit and get it as smooth as possible. But anyway, so um, some of the questions that people are asking on this video were things like, um, how did I start wood turning, or where did I get my interest in it? So... When I was at primary school in the UK, I don't know for my American viewers what you'd call it, uh, maybe elementary school, that's it. So uh, when I was in primary school or elementary school, I'd go to my granddad's workshop after school occasionally, uh, and he was a shop fitter. So he'd have these masses, uh, he had this massive workshop, and I'd go in there and I'd play around with some of the things, some of the tools he's got, and and, um, and see what he's making, uh, and then he'd often make me some things, so he made me uh, a wooden helicopter once, a wooden uh, plane, uh, and I, I'd love I'd love to go in there and, and play around with all the little bits of wood that he had in this little bit bin, he called it, um, but uh, yeah, so I used to play around with them, and I used to remember I, I'd take them home, and my parents would say, oh, you don't need that, you don't need that, but to me, just looking at this natural piece of piece of timber and they're all all different and I loved the patterns of all of them and, and I was really interested from that young age in in timber um, but anyway so I, I when I went to secondary school or high school as the Americans would call it I'm just trying to to make sure everyone's is fully aware of what I'm talking about because obviously in the UK uh, we have different mannerisms for things anyway so when I was in my uh, secondary school uh, I took resistant materials or woodwork or wood shop as some other people would call it uh, and that's where my passion really started to grow I mean as I say I've always had a passion for wood and timber and craftsmanship um, and that was both from visiting my granddad's um, wood turning uh, sorry not wood turning uh, shop fitting workshop and also uh, my dad taught me a huge amount of, of how you build things and stuff he, he does a huge amount of DIY um, and things like that so he's always taught me how, how you do things um, but anyway so yeah I, I started um, started uh, sort of doing it more at school uh, and then um, I, I eventually sort of picked up this hobby uh, and I can tell you more about that if you'd like if you'd like to hear more I've been waffling on a little bit and the video is almost at an end so basically I think if you're really interested in hearing more about my journey or you've got any other questions about anything I appreciate that <laughs> I, I went on a bit but hopefully you found this interesting um, let me know in the comment section below if you'd want an episode two of some sort uh, but yeah let me you know uh, merry christmas to everyone and a happy new year or happy holidays however you're celebrating uh, and thanks very much for all your support for the last couple of years